Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. Now I'm going to start the next problem that is problem number seven on linear programming, graphical method. Already six videos I have completed, six problems also I have completed on this topic. So if you want, you have to practice all the problems. Operation research OR is a subject which requires a lot of practice. Simply if you watch the video or simply if you listen the lecture, that will not at all be sufficient. So my suggestion always, the same problem, practice yourself. If you are stuck at any point, again watch the same video two or three times. Then only you can be able to become perfect on this topic of uh, linear programming problems. Now before starting the seventh problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Take the screenshot, then I'll explain. Now, see the seventh problem. Solve graphically maximize z is equal to 120x1 plus 100x2. So here the formulated problem is given. Objective function maximize z is equal to 120x1 plus 100x2. Subject to constraints. So four constraints are given. The first constraint 10x1 plus 5x2 less than or equal to 80. So here you can see 10x1 plus 5x2 less than equal to 80. Second, 6x1 plus 6x2 less than equal to 66. Next, 4x1 plus 8x2 less, uh, greater than equal to 24. So first two inequalities are less than, whereas the third inequality is greater than equal to 24. Last inequality, 5x1 plus 6x2 less than equal to 90. So out of four constraints, Three constraints are less than or equal to type and one constraint is greater than or equal to type. Non-negativity restriction x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to zero. So this is the complete problem. Now solving by graphical method, first we have to convert the inequalities into equations and then we have to find out the coordinates as usual. First inequality 10x1 plus 5x2 less than or equal to 80. So I'm making it is equal to 80, right? Let x1 is equal to 0. So 5x2 is equal to 80. x2 is equal to 80 by 5, 16. The so coordinates are 0, 16. x1 is 0, x2 is 16. When x2 is equal to 0, 10x1 is equal to 80. x1 is equal to 80 by 10, 8. So x1 is 8, x2 is 0. So coordinates for the first equation we have calculated. Now second, 6x1 plus 6x2 less than or equal to 66 or 6x1 plus 6x2 is equal to 66. Now take x1 is equal to 0. So 6x2 is equal to 66. x2 is equal to 66 by 6, 11. So 0, 11. Second time take x2 is equal to 0. So 6x1 is equal to 66, x1 is equal to 66 by 6 is 11, the 11 comma 0. The two equations we have calculated the coordinates. Now third equation 4x1 plus 8x2 greater than or equal to 24. Now I am making it equation. x1 is equal to 0, so 8x2 is equal to 24, x2 is 24 by 8, 3. So when x1 is 0, x2 is 3. Similarly, when x2 is equal to 0, then 4x1 is equal to 24, x1, 24 by 4 is 6. So x1 is 6, x2 is 0. So three coordinates we have calculated. Now fourth and final equation, 5x1 plus 6x2 less than or equal to 90. So 5x1 plus 6x2 is equal to 90. x1 is 0, so 6x2 is equal to 90, x2, 90 by 6, 15. So 0, 15. Secondly, we take x2 is equal to 0. So 5x1 is equal to 90. x1 is 90 by 5, 18. So 18 comma 0. So we have calculated all the coordinates for the four equations. Now we want the scale. How many units we should take per centimeter? It depends on what is the value of x1 and x2. 
here the values of x1 0 first of all on x axis we take x1 on y axis we take x2 so x1 values are 0 8 11 0 8 0 0 8 0 11 and 0 6 0 18 the highest value you can find 18 is the highest value we cannot take 1 cm 1 unit because we need 18 cm it is not possible so we take 1 cm 2 units so that in 9 cm we can be able to adjust 18 units so x axis 1 cm 2 units on y axis what is the x2 value 16 0 11 0 3 0 15 0 the so highest value is 16 so again if we take 1 cm 1 unit 16 cm are required it will be difficult so again we take 2 units 1 cm is equal to 2 units the so same will take on x and y axis on x axis 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 like that up to 18 on y axis also 2, 4, 6, 8 up to 18 right now we have to draw the coordinates the first equation coordinates are 0, 16 when x1 is 0 x2 is 16 so here you can see 16 this is 16 so at 16 I put a mark and write down here first and x1 is 8 x2 is 0 this x2 0 x1 is 8 so here at 8 I will put a mark 16 and 8 this is 16 and this is 8 join these two points by a straight line and extend it this is first equation put it as 1 and it is less than equal to that so downward arrow towards the origin this is very important towards the origin first inequality we have drawn the second equation 0 11 when x1 is 0 x2 is 11 11 is here 10 and 12 in between 10 and 12 11 so 0 11 11 0 so on x axis also 11 this is 11 10 11 12 now join these two points 11 11 this is the 11 on y axis this is the 11 on x axis join these two points and extend it and this we call it as second constraint so put it number 2 and again it is less than equal to type so towards the origin down arrow so two lines we have drawn third line x1 is 0 x2 is 3 so 0 3 3 is here so here we put a mark at 3 then x1 is 6 so x1 is 6 here so 3 and 6 join these two points 3 and 6 and extend it and this we call it as third inequality number 3 but here it is greater than equal to sign greater than equal to means away from origin not towards the origin if it is less than equal to down arrow if it is greater than equal to up arrow so here I am taking the arrow upwards away from origin and this is the third inequality last fourth inequality it is 0 15 x1 is 0 x2 is 15 15 is here between 14 and 16 you will take 15 then x1 is 18 to so 18 comma 0 this is 18 so 15 18 join these two points and extend it this is the fourth inequality write down number four right and is it greater than or less than less than so towards the origin down arrow this fourth line should be down arrow over all the lines we have drawn now we have to see what is the feasible region this line third constraint says the feasible region is upward not below that means this is not our feasible region similarly this line this second line says the feasible region is downward so this is not our feasible region then first line says the feasible region is downward that means this is not the feasible region this is not the feasible region right now fourth line says it is below 
but fourth line is not at all touching the feasible region. So this fourth line is a redundant line. That means any constraint which does not affect our solution. This fourth constraint is not at all touching the feasible region. So it is redundant, useless. Then the feasible region is this bounded region. Now what are the corner points touching the feasible region? We name it as O, P, Q, R, S. These are the points which are touching our feasible region. Now the shaded area in the above graph is the feasible region. The corner point touching the feasible region are O, P, Q, R, S. The solution lies at one of the corner points, the coordinates are. Now we need the coordinates of O, P, Q, R, S. Out of these five, only one point we have to find out by calculation. The four points directly by observation we can take. Example O. In case of O, X1 is 0, X2 is 3. So 0, 3. Right? For P, again observation, X1 is 0, X2 is 11. So 0, 11. Now Q, we have to find out. Right? Whereas R, x1 is 8, x2 is 0, 8 comma 0, s, x1 is 6, x2 is 0, 6 comma 0. Only we have to find out the coordinates of r, sorry coordinates of q we have to find out. Now we calculate the coordinates of q. The coordinates of q can be ascertained by solving. Now you check which are the two lines intersecting at q. Here, this is a Q point and these two lines are intersecting. Which are the two lines? This is the first line and this is the second line. That means first equation and second equation. By solving these two, we can get the coordinates of Q. So first and second. The first equation is 10x1 plus 5x2 is equal to 80. Here you can see 10x1 plus 5x2 is equal to 80. And the second equation is 6x1 plus 6x2 is equal to 66. These are the two equations. Now, in order to cancel x1, the coefficient should be same. But here coefficient is 10, here the coefficient is 6. So what we do, the first equation we multiply by 6 and the second equation we multiply by 10. So 6 into 10 will become 60, right? So multiplying the first equation by 6 and the second equation by 10. So 6 into 10, 60x1. 6 into 5, 30x2. 6 into 80, 480. The second equation is multiplied by 10. So 10 into 6, 60x1. 10 into 6, 60x2. 10 into 66, 660. Now we cancel this, uh, change the sign, minus, minus, minus. 60x1 minus 60x1 will get cancelled. So 30x2 minus 60x2 is minus 30x2 is equal to 480 minus 660. You will get minus 180. So minus is there on LHS and RHS. It will get cancelled. So 30x2 is equal to 180. So x2 is equal to 180 by 36. So we got x2 value 6. Now substitute the value of x2 in any one of the equation, either in the first equation or in the second equation. You will get the same answer. So I am substituting in the second equation. Second equation 6x1 plus 6x2 is equal to 66. Now in place of x2, I am writing 6. So 6x1 plus 36, 6 is the 36, is equal to 66. Now take this 36 to RHS, so minus 36. So 6x1 is equal to 30, x1 is equal to 5. So finally the coordinates of Q are x1 is 5 and x2 is 6. So 5 comma 6. These are the coordinates of Q. Now we got the coordinates of all the corner points. Now we have to evaluate the objective function. Evaluation of objective function. Corner point O, P, Q, R, S. We got all the corner or the coordinates. Objective function is given in the problem 120x1 plus 100x2. Z value. Now we substitute x1 and x2 value. x1 is 0, x2 is 3. So 120 into 0 plus 100 into 3 is 300. 
here 0 11 x1 is 0 x2 is 11 so 1100 x1 is 5 x2 is 6 so 120 into 5 plus 100 into 6 1200 here 8 0 x1 is 8 x2 is 0 so 120 into 8 960 so x1 is 6 x2 is 0 so it will become 720 what is the highest value of uh, z here 1200 at which corner point q where x1 is equal to 5 x2 is equal to 6. So finally, conclusion you can write. The maximum value of z is 1200 at the corner point Q, where x1 is equal to 5 and x2 is equal to 6. This is the final answer. That's it. This is the end of problem number 7. Inshallah, one more problem is there, problem number 8, that will complete in the next video. And that will be the last and final problem on LPP by graphical method.